Hey everybody, Rob Flax here. I play things with strings, I hit stuff, and I sing, and I am excited to unbox and test out this thing. There's something in this box from Kennedy Violins in Vancouver, Washington. It's an effects pedal, ostensibly designed just for violin. Now, we're going to find out if that's true. And so one of the questions I'm asking today is, what makes a pedal good for violin or not? So let's open it up and see what's inside. Receipt. Packing material. Aha. Ooh. Heavy metal violin pedal. This is really unusual. This is really unusual to have a violin pedal. It actually feels kind of fun. It's sturdily built enough. Sort of a, looks like a ripoff of a boss thing. And on the back it says, use nine volt, 300 milliamps AC adapter only. They've cleverly indicated center negative. So basically any normal adapter uh, that works for boss style pedals. So the heavy metal violin pedal. Let's see what it's made of. So I'm gonna be running this into my Mesa Boogie Studio 22 amplifier. And uh, this amp has a couple of cool features. It has a clean channel and an overdriven channel. Here's the sound of my violin through the amp. That's the clean channel, or the uh, rhythm channel, according to the foot switch. Stomp on the foot switch. Oh yeah, we're overdriving those tubes. Sounds heavy metal. Or maybe it could get heavier. I'm gonna plug this Bunnell 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 Bunnell. I'm gonna plug this. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it uh, Bunnell. That seems nicer. I'm gonna plug this Bunnell pedal in and uh, try it into both the clean side and the dirty side. Ostensibly, it is a distortion pedal. You see there, there's a dist knob. So let's see what it sounds like. And then I'm going to compare this to a couple other overdrive and distortion pedals that I have kicking around. And we're going to see, is this really a violin specific effect? What makes it really good for violin? Or is it just a $40 clone of an existing guitar effect that was labeled violin. Either way, I'm excited to find out. Let's plug it in. Okay, so we got this thing wired up and uh, let's test it out. Once again, my violin. You can hear even on this clean channel, before I turn the pedal on, if I play something soft, it doesn't really distort, but I've got the amp set up so it's right on the edge of if I play anything even medium loud, it starts to distort a little bit as the tubes are overdriven. So the playing dynamics will really change uh, what I get out of it. So now let's turn this pedal on. Sounds pretty good right from the jump. The distortion is all the way down. The level is at noon, the tone is at noon. Let's try that with the bow.
nice. Okay. And again. Now let's try it into the dirty channel. I'm going to switch channels. You'll notice that right away there's feedback from the amp. Uh, because this violin is also an amplifier, so when I crank the gain, there's risk of feedback. That's the amp's distorted tone. By the way, this is why people who play at high gain use an electric solid body instrument to avoid the problems of feedback that an acoustic instrument suffers from. I usually don't play at volumes that loud, so it's not an issue. Okay, so now. Switch that off and change back to the clean channel. Wow, okay, so that's pretty cool. I actually am pleased with this. This was 40 bucks, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's see what happens as I crank up the distortion knob on this, and I'm gonna leave it on the clean channel so we're really hearing more of what this pedal is actually doing. Okay, here we go, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pluck the open G and D strings here, so see what happens. <laughs> Immediately, as soon as we get above zero on the distortion knob, the volume goes way up and, uh, well, it gets more distorted. So I'm going to compensate by turning the volume way down. Heavy metal, bro. Heavy metal. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, there's something inside there that is clipping the signal and is distorting it even before it hits the, uh, the clean amp. Um, if you're hitting an overdriving amp and then have more clipping going into it, maybe it'll change things. So let's try that now. Dirty channel, turning it on. I'm leaving this at 9 o'clock. So again, here's what it sounds like into a clean amp. Changing channel on the amp. sustain again that was just the pedal into a clean amp dirty amp only so there's definitely a different sound that is Getting your dirt from the pedal versus getting your dirt from the amp. They behave differently, the EQ is different, um, and when you stack both of them, it's just instantaneous, like, shrill feedback. You really should be plugging a solid-bodied instrument in. Um, or using some sort of modeling software. People can do things now where they don't actually use an amp. They 
simulate an amp so you can get the sound of a really distorted amp, but not so loud that it starts to cause feedback in your acoustic instrument. These are all workarounds, but uh, so far pretty pleased with the results of this pedal. It sounds all right. Let's mess with the tone knob. I'm gonna keep it on the clean channel for now and, uh, and just tweak the tone knob to see what it does. Right now I've got it set right in the middle. So here we go. That gets really nasal really quickly. Oh my god, okay. Um, all the way up is too much, probably. Um, I also find that using the bow versus plucking, you get a lot more of the high end from the, the string, uh, you know, the, the bow hairs touching the string. Sounds pretty good. I like it. Okay, tone back a little darker. Whoa. <laughs> Comical. You know, it's a sound. It's not really my favorite sound, but it's a sound. Honestly, with the distortion all the way down, it sounds pretty good. It's not distorting that much. It has a lot of dynamic response. That might be a nice thing if you were playing a solo. And you wanted to just cut through a little more. For 40 bucks, not a bad sound. Okay, and with the distortion anywhere above zero, you have to really bring the volume back a lot. Just for giggles, I went back to the distorted uh, lead channel um, while that was on, and uh, it kind of is too much. It's it's too much. The amp is starting to cave in on itself and collapse. So uh, the transients, the uh, the start of each note loses a little um, punchiness. It starts to get a little squishy sounding, and uh, didn't feel very natural under the fingers. Would take some getting used to, but cool sound. So now, I'm curious to see how similar is this sound to a couple other different overdrive and distortion boxes that I have lying around. My hunch right away, because it sounds the way it does with the distortion all the way down, and then as soon as you crank it, it changes dramatically, I think this is a clone or some kind of knockoff of the famous Boss DS1 pedal. So... Let's take a look and see.
Okay, we're back. I have now plugged in a couple other very popular and famous distortion and overdrive pedals. So once again, here's the Bunnell with a little bit of distortion. Now let's compare that to the uh, DS1, the Boss Orange pedal of famed history. behaves totally differently. Cool. It's a little more, a uh, little more uh, trebly, a little more shrill. If I crank the tone on the DS1, I can get similarly uh, terrible sounding. Remember, both of those are into a clean amp. If I hit the uh, the dirty channel, you got uh, got this guy here down below. That's a lot. Okay, the Bunnell is definitely heavier than the DS1. Here's the tube screener. If I turn the overdrive all the way up on it, it still sounds a little smoother, a little rounder than uh, than either of these distortion pedals. This is an overdrive, these are distortion. So the way that the waveform is getting clipped and, and messed with is different. This is, the Tube Screamer is what they call soft clipping. The D DS1 distortion pedal is hard clipping. I would say the Bunnell is um, very hard clipping. <laughs> to a dirty channel. Here's the Tube Screamer.
<laughs> so that was an interesting look. One more idea. I'm curious. It's not a DS1. I hope that was clear. You can tell it's not really the same circuit as a DS1. It could be another boss pedal like the Metal Zone, or there even was one called the Heavy Metal at some point. Um, so maybe it's modeled after that. It's definitely not a DS1 or a Tube Screamer. Let's try something else. I have another idea. Final test. Maybe it's a rat. Here's my rat. And now this is labeled differently. It's got a filter knob and a distortion knob instead of a tone and distortion. So once again, here's the sound of the heavy metal. Hard clipping, sounds great. Here's the rat. Whoa. Okay, interesting. If the distortion's all the way down on the rat, it actually kind of cleans up. Definitely different circuit design. Okay, and one last test. Here's the OCD. This is probably going to be loud. I love this pedal because it has so much volume. I also hate this pedal because it has so much volume. So I'm going to turn the drive all the way up and the volume all the way down. Definitely not an OCD, but I hope you can hear there are some similarities and some differences here. This is definitely an overdrive pedal. It is soft clipping, clipping like the Tube Screamer, but right now I've got the drive cranked so much that it's, it's getting a little hairier. It also has this uh, high peak, low peak switch. So with the low peak, it's much smoother. Okay, not much smoother, but a little bit smoother. Okay, last but not least, what happens if we run all of them on at the same time into the overdrive channel? Here we go. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, um, I still don't think that this is an original circuit design. I'm pretty sure it's just, it's a pedal that I don't own. It's a higher gain thing and it's designed probably closer to a, maybe a Boss Metal Zone or some other pedal that has the word heavy metal in it. Um, I'm not really sure since I don't usually play that style of music. 
But is this a useful pedal for me? If I turn the distortion all the way down and keep the volume at about unity, um, it's kind of a cool sound. <laughs> I'm, I'm not mad, but is it a better sound than the rat? I wouldn't say it's dramatically better. What about the OCD, if I have this at a more reasonable setting? Sounds pretty good too. So I guess the question is, is this really a violin only pedal? I don't think so. Um, one last test would be try a guitar through it, see what happens. So let's do that. Okay, I've got my guitar here. This is a 1966 Univox UC2, kind of a weird offset thing of a jazz master or jag kind of sounding thing. That's the sound of it into the regular amp. Here's the uh, overdrive channel, the lead channel with the same guitar. Sounds okay. Let's try the heavy metal violin pedal on this guitar. I like that. That's a nice tone. So uh, what happens if the uh, distortion is above zero? Remember on the violin, that was that would be howling feedback. This is uh, with the volume still at noon and the distortion cranked. So solid body instruments, very useful thing. Different sound though because it's got a pick instead of a bow, but uh, kind of works for guitar too, huh? One more time, here's the rat. is caving in a little bit at this gain level but uh it's still pretty impressive um one thing i like about this is the amount of low end it's retaining it still has all of the bass frequencies uh let me crank the tone a little more uh I'll scoop it this way that sounds horrible also sounds horrible OCD, one last time. Totally different sound, way less harsh. The, uh, the soft clipping of an overdrive means that those edges are a little rounder. It doesn't have the shrill cutting treble frequencies that either the Benel or the Rat have. But um, man, all in all, I'm pretty impressed with this. $40 violin pedal, it totally works on guitar. It probably would work on bass as well. And while it's likely a clone of a metal zone or some other uh, pedal that I'm just 
not familiar with circuit design. Um, pretty cool sounding thing. Um, genuinely impressed. Uh, gonna have to pay a visit to the folks at uh, Kennedy Violins next time I'm on the West Coast and, and let them know that their, uh, their violin pedal is pretty cool. Anyway, I hope this was useful. I hope you learned a little something about overdrive versus distortion, maybe clean channel versus overdriven channel. Um, you know, let me know what you think. Feel free to comment below. Let me know if you liked what you saw here. Uh, if you'd like to hear me playing more high gain things, if you think I need to grow my hair into a long and luscious locks. I used to have very long hair back in, back in the day, but uh, never really got into the, the shred metal world quite that that way. Maybe, maybe now it's time. Maybe it's time. So anyway, I uh, hope this has been helpful. Uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. And uh, thanks for all those of you who are supporting me on Patreon. Uh, I'll have their names down in the description below. Um, uh, also, thank you to Josh Scott of JHS Pedals and to Philippe uh, of Caroline Guitar Company. Philippe uh, Herndon, I think is his last name. Um, there's a video on the JHS YouTube channel where they mentioned this pedal and it was in a series of pedals that had the word metal in it and uh, I heard about this one and thought that is just silly I have to see what's up um, and it turns out it it's a pretty good sounding pedal and it was only 40 bucks so uh, thank you to to Josh for the tip off on that and uh, yeah see you soon internet see you on the internet oh seven hugs a day be sure to get Seven hugs a day. That's a good uh, recommended daily dosage of vitamin H. Bye.